the best possible films you can. People that connect with animals really are my heroes. I blacked out and hurt my girlfriend. I'm really thankful that I didn't kill her. For me, my music has been part of my escape. I've done 30 years in prison. In the process of robbing a jewelry store, I shot and killed a police officer. My documentary's about a wasted talent. I'm in here for spousal abuse. She said she thought she was gonna die that night. I've never been incarcerated, nothing like this. You just wanna get out, man. You just wanna get out, get out, get out. Let's shock the world right now. So this is a very important moment in the history of mankind. This is your final project. This is the project you chose, the project you believe in, and you're gonna have to make it come to life. You're gonna have one 63-minute tape to tell a four to six-minute story. Now all these exercises, the ones that we've been doing, you've seen kind of what the challenges are. Well, guess what? Now the stakes are even higher, because by next week this time, we should all be done. It's in the best interest, like everybody involved here, that your stories be the best that they can be. It's gonna be a Muslim service on Friday. So I can interview them both right there. Tomorrow I'll know everything. Either it's gonna happen or it's not going to happen. We can give the list to Sam. That's all we gotta do. And we can go up to the chapel. All right, that sounds good. Cool. There's some pressure here. We're making mini masterpieces, right? If there's no pressure in it, then we're just making crap. Everything's on the line here. Why are you doing that? Give me get some real close up and focus in and get some, some really like some yeah, yeah. faces. Like this right here. My story is about a very unique man here in San Quentin who has the ability to communicate with the birds. <laughs> they call him the bird man. So how long have you been here at San Quentin? The last 13 years, going on 14. I had a shootout with the police officers in Santa Rosa. How does your day go when you don't get out here to see these ducks? It's like I'm caged, you know. I just, I don't like being in my cell. I have so much I do out here in this patio. Yeah, I take care of all the animals around here. I get them out of the razor wire, I send them out to wild animal care. I wanted to show like the journey of from you and yourself to, to out here, you know what I mean? Okay, as long as it isn't gonna take forever because I got work I have to do. I had this idea of the way it was going to go in my head. Kenny was going to run my camera, and I had been talking to him all weekend about what I wanted. And then Monday morning, it was Marv running the camera. And he's going to walk back and forth like three or four times and then just come out. I had thrown my storyboard out the window. It was nice to have one in the beginning, but I think it'll probably be a better film for it. I think I got lots of good stuff. Feeding the birds now? Well, see, we can't get him feeding the birds. That's the thing. We can see the birds eating. OK, well, then we can do that. Come on down now. Always love animals. Animals are as close as you can get to God, I think. My documentary is about how hard it is to be American and practice the faith of Islam at the same time. Do it again. I'm gonna come up to y'all with the camera and get closer to y'all face, you know, and all that type of. If you feel comfortable with that, though. I'm American, you know, and, and a lot of other Muslims are American, but we have a faith that sometimes people look at us as being terrorists or even people that might do something radical at any given moment. I love that's all that matters. During the time of 9-11, I was serving five years, and all of a sudden, they caught every Muslim in the dorm, and they locked us up in a room, you know? And I, we just sat there for a couple of days. They didn't, they was like, they was under a state of emergency. They didn't know what Muslims was gonna do. So I looked at it, and it's like, man, this need to be known about. If you shoot this way, you got, like, naked people, and you got, like, a right there. I have three of them sitting right here, and I shoot back. Don't try to be nervous. I'm not gonna record right away. I'm gonna talk to you to get comfortable. You might hear me say record, then we'll start recording. 
go um, Chris, what? Relax. I know. I know. I'll help you through this. I know. And I can make the shot right. So we're about to start. How y'all doing today? Very good, thank you. I'm good. In these services y'all go to, do y'all speak about the Muslim faith? Here in the penitentiary, outside these walls, we're all brothers. There's a common thread. God. I would think in here, the Muslim faith is probably more acceptable than it is on the outside. On the outside, there's a lot of people that connect the Muslim faith with terrorists. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. With music. <laughs> I feel like I did a good job today. That feels good. I feel hella good today. You got everything you need for your stuff? You know, I just heard uh, uh, Heavy say something about they can't go to the chapel, so I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to figure out. Why we can't go to the chapel? I don't know. How's everybody going at home? How's everybody at home? Oh, everybody cool. My brother, oh, I, no, my brother died too. I didn't tell you that. Oh, what? Yeah, my oldest brother. Recently? Last week. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, he. Uh, you no, know, but I think you did mention something yeah, about he that. He had, uh, he had cancer, man. And uh, it was a trip because I hadn't seen him in all this time. So it was like it'd been 30 years, you know. And we talked on the phone and all that. They're gonna send me an obituary and all that stuff in, in the funeral program. What I might try to do is get the, the number to the, uh, where the funeral going to be held and maybe call and yeah. say something. Because a lot of the family members are going to try and be there. Mm -hmm. You know, stayed out of trouble. That's one thing I said about him. He never came to prison, nothing like that. And then, you know, you know, you look at me and my other two brothers, all of us wind up in jail. So. Mm. One of the things with, that really is difficult for me and my family is they really believe, you know, I'm getting out of prison. I already know that it's going to be real difficult for me to get out of prison. So I'm stuck in this kind of no man land of trying to be honest and truthful with him, but not create any illusions. That's right, give the world your combination. Oh yeah, man, give me a good thing. I'm a... <laughs> That's right, I'm tripping now. What is my combination, man? This is my cell, and this is also where I create a lot of my music at. So you, you know, your living room, your bathroom, the kitchen, all those things are rolled in one. My film is called Still Dreaming, My Music, My Soul. And it's about my 30 year journey through prison and how I've used music to maintain my sanity. And even though it's cramped and, and small, which you, which, which, once you kind of get adjusted to it, you find that you can have a lot of solitude in a space like this. Oh, you gotta get out. You gotta get out, you gotta stop. Ernesto, get out. Ernesto, get out. Too long, man. Hey, Ernesto, you're focusing too much on him. I need you to get me. There's certain things that's going on there. I, I, I want to be I got you, I got you, I got you. And this is what you call a penitent to your lawn. And hopefully it's not anything seriously going on, but it could be. Uh, but this is what I deal with every day in prison. It's, it's the reality that at any given minute something could happen in here and it could disrupt my life. I'm setting up now to get ready to work on some of my music. And hopefully the lawn went off, so I'm hoping everything's okay. Yeah, you can get there. Sit down? Yeah, you can sit down there. Okay. This is something that I, that, I, that I put together, man. And I just want to get your, your, your input on it. So A6. 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 Okay, yeah. but wait a minute. You want major or minor? No, just A6. It's right okay. there. Yeah, major A6. or minor? Just an A6, man. Yeah. Don't tape, man, please. Like, I got to save my tape, man. You know, Vanessa, you got to listen to me, man. I, I don't need that for a tape. I got enough of this stuff. So you have to learn Spanish to get him to respond faster. Let's get it first, and then we... we, we I got it. Up. I got it. Well, let's hear it. I got to hear it. I can't... I'm burning up too much tape, okay. and I, and I well, got to I didn't stop. know you were recording. Yeah. I mean, All right. So if I'm, you're recording now... Well, don't record well, now. Let's stop dry right. run right here. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Dry run. 20, 20 minutes. 27 minutes. Oh, okay, yeah, dry so run. I'm, I'm let me, halfway too much. Let me get a dry run right here. Damn. That's one thing about life. I keep telling my... Lonnie, you've got to stay with me. Man, you. listen, Jeff. This is not about Jeff. you got to hear this, seriously. This is about me. This is stumbling and fumbles. Is all this piece is it's about. about me? No, no. And it's not oh. about doing anything but perfect. This is stumbling. This is what we do when we produce songs. Right. You know that. We didn't never. We don't ever just get in and do no song, right? I thought we, it was about me. No, no. It's That's why I wanted to shave. It, no, no. But it's about... It's about... It's about... Oh. Yeah, this is not about <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> How he want to be seen. You know what I'm saying?
Alright, here we go. Here we go. Hold this up. Yeah. Yeah, let's go. Huh? Let's go. Let me know when you set up in this one, because I know the I'm making a real call. This ain't no joke. I've had a lot of family members die. Lonnie, Morris. So when someone dies that you're close to or, or that you know, there's the automatic assumption that, you know, you would attend the funeral and you'd be present and support the family and those kind of things. I can't do any of those things in any real way. I can call and talk, you know, on the phone. But I feel bad about not being able to do those things, too. This is crazy, man. They answered the phone, man, and the dang thing don't click on, man. I'm really frustrated because I couldn't get my people on the phone right now. So you need this shot to be in I need, your point of crash, right? I, mean, I know, but I'm saying the shot we're going to get is that door. Yeah, but it's not telling you. I can't do anything, to... man. I can't do anything else. Practice. Start talking. I'm not going to start talking till I stop. Just so I can see if the sound's going to oh, get okay. you, brother. So through this door right here is where I have to go each year to determine whether or not the Board of Prison Terms will find me suitable for release on parole. No one in prison wants to die behind the walls of prison. It's almost like you're, if you die in prison, it's like your soul will be trapped for eternity. That's how we feel about it. So I know guys that say, man, if I just can step outside the gate and fall dead on the other side, I will have fallen dead a free man. That's the thing. Do you think, man? You can rap. Come through. Oh, OK. Well, because I don't know what it's the, the tape's blinking. Does that mean it's over? There's no tape? The battery light. Yeah, you see this tape. 60 minutes? Yeah. I think we did, right? I kept asking you what the track was. You told me I told you you have 15 minutes. minutes left. That was that was. Weird. Right now. I know, but I didn't talk for no 15 minutes. I actually did. And I know you're good and you try to you try to do the best you can. But when I say I'm calling you four times, Ernesto, Ernesto, and you're still down there shooting at the door. That's my fault? Out of the whole thing, I think that you didn't want me to record. If I anything, I recorded after you kept on talking. This is not a script. I don't have nothing written out. I'm just talking about what I say at the That's time. That's exactly what I'm saying. You don't you don't have a script, so you don't have to worry about, oh, am I going to say the same thing again? Of no, course you're going to say it but again. No, you, maybe no I'm going to say more, more tough, this. More. No, what you, anything you say I don't want to do this in front of the camera, Lanyon. Well, OK, you, right? no, well, okay. whatever. I'm not, I ain't tripping the camera, man. This has been a very, very, Frustrating day. All right, man, that's it. Man. Why is Lonnie mad at you, man? <laughs> oh, we heard it, man. There's no more tape. Ah. He shot 60 minutes already? Yeah. Well, no, he didn't shoot. He shot right. 60 minutes. Wow. 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 <laughs> hey, no, seriously. I think he has a whole bunch of good things to say. And I think 60 minutes ain't going to cut it, man. All right. But you guys understand why I said you guys only get one take. You got so much to edit to go through, right? Right. I know it's hard when you're filming inside the cell with Lonnie and just good stuff and good stuff and good stuff is coming out. But what good is it that you have six hours, right, worth of material, but all you're gonna have is a four-minute piece, a six-minute piece? This is a test. To me, it's like, it's not really making a movie. It's about, you know, how much strength and how much, you know, heart do we put into this six minutes? And can we get our point across? That's the test. I know I get intense when I do this stuff. I've done it before, so I know my tension level and my intensity, intensity level goes up, and I'm going to be, no, no, don't do this, don't do this, especially when you operate in a short time frame. And that translated into not being able to focus on the tape and not being able to focus, everything was jump, jump, go from here to there. I tried to call my family, couldn't get nobody on the phone. That raised my frustration level up. Tomorrow they bury my brother, I think it's tomorrow Friday, they bury my brother, so I wanted to try to talk to them on the phone about it. Couldn't get nobody. And so there's real life going on while this filmmaking process is going on, too. And these are all lessons from imperfect cinema. The world isn't like waiting for us to go out and film it. It's not. Even outside of here, it's never like that. And I mean, you guys are all pregnant, man. Hey, bro, I'm, I'm yeah, not pregnant. pregnant. I knew it. I knew you were gaining weight. <laughs> <laughs> these are your guys' babies, man. These are your guys' babies. You know? I'm feeling pressure too, Pepe. You know? I got friends, yeah. you know, people I know are coming down, you man, and they're driving all this way to help me out and do me a favor. So now I feel not only do I gotta satisfy myself, you know, which is normally pretty easy, you know, but uh, 
I got, I got, I got to make them, you know, satisfied and proud or whatever, man, too. I feel better today than I, I can honestly say I've ever felt, you know. And I've done a lot of drugs. I've done a lot of cool stuff with my life, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's wrap up. So how about it, Bruce? Can you get that other tape? <laughs> Back to the tape. I'm open to making an additional tape available, but not to necessarily be shot out. But learn the lesson that although tape is cheap, editing time isn't. And it's going to be at everybody else's expense if you have to take extra time to be cutting. And you, you have to get it done by two weeks from this Thursday. We got to go back to North Block? Are we through with North Block? No, we may have to go back. Because I, I didn't get the phone call. And I'm going to try to set it up uh, uh, for tomorrow. I just want to know, when you were up there, were you asking him specifically, like, OK, how do you want this framed? How do you want, you know? I think I messed up. Well, you're going to get a chance to redeem yourself and make it better. Yeah, you up for it? Yeah. All right, man. All right. I told him I ain't nothing to quit, man. No, he's not quitting. He's not quitting. <laughs> he's not quitting. That's the only thing You'll be all right. That's the only thing. You'll be all right. <laughs> so we got your storyboards. This is like another form of, of you communicating to your DP. He stumbles forward, and we see the arrow in his back. At the end, I want you to go from stretch to the baseball mound. Keep it simple, but with great content. And that, that'll be the power behind it, I guess. She's smiling. And then, but she responds to him, right? You can put that there. And then cuts up to him. Uh -huh. Then he's like, man, I got I gotta go, you know? The scene that I do want, though, is him opening his door right here and the dog. A dog? Dog over here, <laughs> scratching at the door. Where are we gonna get a dog from, man? Where are we gonna get a dog from? How come yours is not as complicated as mine? Well, because I put a lot of work into mine. This ain't, it was complicated. I just didn't type that up. That took, I put a lot of work into that. You, you got your script, right? Yeah. And you kind of kind of got what your vision is, right? Yeah. But like, usually what happens in situations, you get like some actors, they, they want to add their own flavor. I know you're, mm -hmm. you're looking for that. So like, let them do that, right? But let them do it one way how you want it to. Oh, yeah. All right, let's see what they got, man. OK. Good luck. All right, thank you. Yeah. I like to ask for the divine creator, whatever you call his name, by the blessings in our little endeavor here, and that may we operate as in unison with um, a high quality of organization. Mitch and Luke, you guys are carrying some of the heaviest roles, but I picked you guys because I know that you can pull it off. I want it to be believable. And we've all been in these positions to where we know what's believable to us. It's not really about acting, it's about reacting. If you stay true to the scene, the part, you'll stay true to everything else. The camera's not even there. Don't even worry about the camera. Relive the moment that we've all seen. And don't be afraid to cry a little bit. You know, scream, oh, Lord, <laughs> we the killer. <laughs> so y'all want to walk through it right now, or y'all? Let's, let's do this. OK. Let's, uh, let's roll from uh... Walk through it the way you guys got it. All right. Look, man, it's written all over you, all right? You got to learn to control. You got to learn to control your anger. Man, now how you expect me to do that with all these suckers around here? Yeah, OK. I'm glad you asked, OK? You got to let him reflect for a second. Mm -hmm. And then once he reflects and you see the shift in his, in his, in his expression change, that's when you be like, look, because now you, you letting them know, like, like, I'm not against you. Look, man, I ain't going to make the same mistakes you made. Yeah, you will if you don't find out what's at the root of your anger. Man, I said I ain't angry. <laughs> Let you tell it. It's written all over you, man. You got, to, you got to learn to control that. Man, how do you expect me to control my anger when I got all these suckers around me, man? I'm glad you asked that. That was good. I got to make some more mental notes. But that was, that was, I think that'll work. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, that's it. Really, really good stuff, for real, man. Yeah, for thank sure. You. Yeah. you shine, I shine, we shine. I'm a And yeah. then we get to shine a big old light. Yeah, we, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And you think they'll show this at Cannes Film Festival? We want an Oscar. We want an Oscar, <laughs> baby. Okay. I got a little surprise for you guys. Congratulations.
congratulations on uh, everything so far, guys. I've just been hearing stories about how you guys have been taken to filmmaking. I'm sort of in a similar position, because I just got started uh, getting behind the camera after acting for a while. You know, there's so many ways to tell a story. I love humor, so I always try to, even if something's dramatic, I try to find humor in it. Just because it, it brings things alive. When people smile or laugh, even if they are pissed off about something, if something weird and quirky happens, I think capturing those kind of moments make it real, you know? Just a little backstory. My father studied uh, improvisation a lot and taught it. So we do a lot of games, like when we were kids, like go into the animal cracker box and pick something out. You, if it was a lion, you don't show anybody, and then you right. act like a lion. Whoever guesses it gets the cookie. And then you say, OK, now let's bring it up to human form, but still maintaining some of the animal characteristics. What I loved about that, and I've used it in a couple movies, is that it gives you different choices for a character. You know, we've never done this in class yet. Would you guys want, want to do like some acting with David? <laughs> get some animal characters. Ah, come on, get up there. So guys, let's pick out an animal for each one of these guys. A chihuahua. What? Parakeet. A cotorro. A All right. Bull. A bull. You're a bull. All right. I'm the gorilla. No, no, no. You don't have to be. A seal. A seal. All right. So take some time. Give me credit. Think about your animal picture in your head. All right, give me one, too. Give you a fox. A fox? All right. So now, give us a place to be. In the middle of the city, more, more, in a mall. OK, is it, what time of year is it? Christmas. It's Christmas at the mall. Up to a human, but still maintain your animal characteristics. All right? Can I? Can I? Can I help you with that, sir? Is this what you want, sir? What's that over there? Uh, uh, th uh that appears. <laughs> Look, a television set. I don't want to take any bull from anybody. Give me what I want. I want it now. Hey, I thought we could do it. You know how you play on like improv, like somebody starts off a story and sit and just pass it on. There's, you know what? Okay, there's one where you you all sit and then we start word by word. You know, one day I was walking, and then after you've done that for a while, then you start saying sentences. So let's just do that. I tripped over a rock and got wet by wet clouds. So I fell to my knees, started crying. And the grass started growing. I really had to go on a trip. I had to get out. And the trip I went on involves Philly Blunt raps. <laughs> <laughs> and I found myself in Sweden. And then I caught a train to the red light district, where I had a lot of fun. And then I went to the hash bar. I smoked a big joint. That was good stuff. And then redemption songs started playing. And I, for the first time, listened to the words. And then I also realized that I don't really need to put this stuff in my body to understand who I am. But I do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I had a real good time, man. What are some of the challenges that, like, you anticipate us having, getting out, trying to, you know, get our films, you know, out there and produce? Don't let anything stop you. That's because, you know, people, especially as actors, people, uh, you get rejected all the time. Like, it's just constant rejection. Even some of the biggest actors, I've seen them not be able to get jobs. And I'm like, how? How can this guy not do any movie he wants? He's one of the biggest stars in the world. It's like really hard to get people to read scripts, even when you have a great one. But if you got something cool that you could give somebody and said, this was my first film, that means everything. That has more value than, you know, here's the script I wrote. So I can send you a copy of my first Yeah, <laughs> please do. I look forward to it. In the future, I, I guarantee you'll see one of us. I guarantee it. Just take a, a steel shot of everyone, yeah, because I, I, I think 
it's gonna be something, you know, real special, man. We're gonna do a film together. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I look at this and I just, I don't want it to end. And then that fear comes along, scared of disappointment. What can I do after this, you know? What can I do after this, it, as far as this goes, as far as the film industry? Yeah. Islamic services on Friday. There's gonna be two people there. I'm gonna interview both of them right there. Are all the ones you're about to read me for Kamal specifically? Well, I'm only gonna, I'm not gonna give a whole lot because that'd be too much. We don't know, one question could be the whole interview. Okay, thank you for closing the meeting. Oh, here's my ass. Oh, kiss ass. You sure don't change, Chris. You sure don't change, man. You being a antagonistic lady. Every, everything is crazy. Cause I want to see the real. That's yeah, all. Yeah, man, you've been on the offense. But you got to keep really it real. Going you know somebody else. What's really going on? Right? I keep it real all day, every day. That's what you call real, bro. Just gonna leave it like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I, I talk to you in private. Yeah. I'm gonna pull you to the side, whether or not you want to hear it or not. Man, tell me then. You ain't never pulled me to the side before. Come on, let's step outside. I'm trying to understand where you coming from. I'm not trying to be antagonistic to you. I'm just telling you I ain't going for the bull What's, what is, what, what's, what's bull about it? I don't know, you talking about don't go Hollywood. All I see is y'all put up shows every day for these cameras. Who? That's all I, you, you and everybody, How? a lot of people. How? 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 The stuff I see people doing in, in this prison is not what I see in that, in that room. So when I see people in there doing all that fake ass I just what? be like, man, look, man. Focus on you, quit focusing on everybody else. I ain't focusing on everybody else, but don't be in front of me with let me just talk to him for a minute. Can I do that? Just, let, me, let me just suggest this. Because I, I, I understand where both of y'all come from. I think the big thing is that allowing yourself to realize that, man, three more weeks, we, we working together on this project. I think tension is going to rise as we get through it, as we go closer and closer to completing these projects, trying to get things done. So the thing is, we got to tap it down. We got to all keep more control of our emotions. I believe you're right. We may not be friends. We may not agree philosophically about everything. But when you said yourself, how do we get through this thing, how we make the best project, how we shock the world and all that. To do that, we got to work together. That's going to be the pivotal thing. Enough before I'm gonna be granted parole. And technically, I don't know if I'm ever gonna be granted parole. The common theme all of us have here is that our love of prayer, our faith, and our ability to connect with each other. Come on, come on, baby. That's too much. Yo también tengo uno en camino. Pero yo también tengo, ¿sí me entiendes? Where is Ernesto? We need to see here before the 8. We're for all, man. Everyone is here at the hour they want. I'm the only one here. No, but if you've arrived here before the 8, I can help you. Do you understand? But if you don't get here until the 8 o'clock, then what? All right. Y eso hace a todos pensar que, que no tienes la confianza de hacer esto. Pero yo sí sé que lo puedes hacer. Pero no llegas tarde, esa es la única bronca. Vale. A ver, movie stars. Hay mucho pedo. Además, usted está muy chico todavía. Es todo muerto. Ahí está. A ver, sigue practicando ese, muerto. Si no es el momento, son las Olimpiadas. No estamos listos. ¿Quién va a cuidar a nuestros hijos? Es mucho pedo. Además, ustedes están muy chamacos todavía. Black Roses. It's a mini drama of Mexico 1968, a couple months before the Olympics. Brought a tragic change in the lives of a young couple, newlywed. Cuando dijiste, hago esto por él, por las migajas, a él como le estás haciendo hace ratito. O sea, con la misma, con el mismo ímpetu. It's real frustrating for me as a teacher, man. When we show up today and we're supposed to have a rehearsal and you're not here. And then your rehearsal slash casting, you know, there were two guys. I mean, that's just real frustrating to me, man. Let's talk about your film. You're making a film about one of the most Con horrific yeah. student massacres that, is, that was swept under the rug. 
that the Mexican government still today barely acknowledges that this even happened. Nobody has been brought to justice to this day. You have an opportunity to shine a little light on something that's so humongous, man. And everybody here wants you to succeed at making that, man. I didn't know that was what your story was about. I like reading about stuff like that, especially if the Mexican government is still trying to, you know, not acknowledge it. All I knew was the government came in and killed some people. I didn't even know there was college students. Was it was, they were high school, they were high school students. They were workers, working unions, teachers, students. They were all just peaceful march. And tanks, grenades, and helicopters came out, just nowhere, gunshots. And it just filled the whole plaza with blood. I mean, it was... I don't understand why you're so nonchalant. You seem passionate about this, this incident that you want to do a film about, but yet you're not doing anything about it. You're like, well, it was such a terrible thing, and I've got this opportunity to bring it to the light, but I'd rather watch TV. Look, I value this thing more, like the journey that we're taking. This is, like, that's for me, it's like getting to know Troy, getting to know everybody. But seriously, sometimes some, and I'm saying all of us, including myself, we get big headed, man. Filmmakers, we're not filmmakers yet. We're barely learning the process. We're barely learning the process. I just feel like sometimes we're acting, man. That's what we're doing, man, it's just yeah. acting. Man, look, there's never been a group of guys who allow to get cameras and from in prison and make their own film. I don't care how you, you can call it big head or whatever, but that is big and it's something to be proud of because we were selected from a group of a lot of guys. You did bring some quality that they saw in us and they said, hey man, I like something about that guy right there. I see something in that guy. You should be proud of yourself to say, hey man, I am a filmmaker. And you see it in your work. People tell you, they've been telling you everything you shot. People have been saying, man, dang, look at that, look at that. Yeah. So ask yourself, what's, what's holding you back? Because I think a lot of what you're doing, when you're running off and finding you, is some of that fear, man. I'm not afraid, I just... It's something, you just... whatever it is. That's just my guess. <laughs> you can't take on the whole world, Ernesto. The whole world, is, <laughs> they're gonna beat you down. You but you can take one little piece, and that's what you have an opportunity to do right here, is take one little piece and conquer that. The heat is on, man. You only have this much time to make your thing, man. That's pressure, man. Pressure's on. There is a guy in the mail. It's to St. Quentin State Prison from U.S. Department of Homeland Security, Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Deportation or remove the United States has been ordered. I have my sister here, I have my girlfriend here, I have my nieces here, everything I have is here, right? Whatever I had in Mexico, I don't have anymore. I just want to, you know, stay here and if I could do good, do good. If not, you know, I'm not gonna come back. If I get deported, I'm not gonna come back. My documentary is about a waste of talent. It's about uh, Chris Rich. Chris could have played professional baseball, and it's just about how far their talent could have taken them outside the walls of prison. What about right here, Barb? He was throwing batting practice without a cage, and somebody hit a line drive and shattered his shin. The scouts dropped him after that. All right, we good, Marv? You got the tape on? Yeah, the tape again. Is everything right? You ready? All right, I'm going to go get him, then. No, you're going to stay here. I'll go get him. All right, yeah. Well. I mean, he killed his wife with a baseball bat. The newspaper article said that he dressed her in jogging clothes, put her in a car and took her to Devil's Canyon, and then um, did it again to make sure she was dead. If I was playing baseball, every time I swung the bat, I'd be thinking about that, you know what I mean? But that's, to hit somebody with just the sound of that, man. Let me see you again, let me see. And you can't complain about the natural lighting, huh? No, that's, yeah. Woo. OK, sit straight up. That's about I know, as that's straight as I too, sit up. Well, how are you doing, Shresh? I'm doing well this morning. How are you? All right, good. We'll go see, we'll go see your mind when you think about your wife. Man, I have a lot of 
mixed feelings when it comes to that because my wife was a, a person that I loved very deeply and a person that obviously I loved her and cared enough about her to marry her. And I also have the, the mixed feeling. I mean, obviously, I, I killed her. The relationship had problems. I don't know how to say this to you, but... Uh, just say it. Being it the way, you know, your wife died, I mean, just the whole swing the bat thing, like, do you ever think about that when you're playing baseball? Or does that just, like, pop in your mind sometimes, or...? Yeah, that, that, that's a really interesting question. Uh, the only time it ever popped into my mind was the first time I played softball when I hit a, hit a, a prison yard in Corcoran. And it just felt, it was a really strange sensation. It, it, it just happens to be a coincidence. It's, uh, to me, there's no correlation in my mind. At least I haven't put it together that way. But I can also understand how people from the outside can look and say, oh, why should he be playing baseball? Look what he did. Your wife's dying. She's in the back of the car. You take her up to Devil's Canyon. Uh, what's, go what's going through your mind, like, as you're going up there? I remember walking back because I, dum I dumped the car, too. I mean, a after, I, after I dumped the body and after I dropped off some things, I dumped the car. And I walked home, and it ran through my mind. And this is the part where he goes to prison for the rest of his life. Not me. This is the part where he goes to prison the rest of his life. And it was just surreal. Thanks again, Stretch. I appreciate right. it, man. We're good? Yeah, we're good. Right. I wanted to ask you questions I didn't think anybody had asked you before, but you've been through this so many times. It's no, like... nobody's asked those questions before. Huh? If you're ever just interested and want to talk about it, I'll talk about it with you. Right. I know you have a wife and you have a kid. And, you know, I don't think you have, I don't think you're you're wired that way. I think you probably vent your anger differently than I do. But uh, I think I've gotten away. Well, so that's a good pitch right there. You came you came out of your hip and just stayed down. I look forward to getting up every morning and doing this. I wish it wasn't just weeks. I wish it was another year, because it would just pass the time so fast. I'm making my own film, and I, I, I love doing it. I think uh, I'm going to have a good piece, something that people will like. Even if it's not on TV, I want to see how good it comes out. Take a step like you normally do. I'll end up right near you. I know it's going to be all my doing, so it's like I can say I did that, you know? Oh, that's killer right there. Gosh, man, especially that one right there was killer. Hey, you know what? That one will be in my thing. That was a really good shot. I want to pursue this when I get out. I just don't know how to go about getting the right funding, whatever, schooling, you know? He said, you said, okay. I'm a little nervous. I wanted to get some shots of me working with a lady named Miss Simon, uh, who works here, but she's also a great vocalist. Okay, I don't know the beat, so where we go next? Yeah, the A flat minor. Just a straight A flat minor. Yeah, to the A6. When you do music, it's really important to find people that got the right chemistry. If that chemistry is not there, they're gonna throw the whole mood of the song off. It's not so you need to tell us what key you or just, or maybe we just let her sing and you just... Actually, yeah, yeah well, just, I'll have to Just start, find the key there. I'll have to do use what the conservatory taught me now. Right, so. there you go. <laughs> Whatever you want to do there. Nobody knows what tomorrow will bring. I'll start one more time. Nobody knows what tomorrow will bring. Okay. It could be a lot of trouble, the most Gave me something. All right. I think you should repeat that. I think you should do that twice. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, that's pretty too much at the beginning of it. Because I just want to see how it's going to come okay. off that transition All right. to get you the hook. I think the intro is too long if you don't come Am in I there. supposed to do the second verse right now? Oh, the first one from the top. Oh, oh my bad. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Been up since four. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Oh, I already duck it. <laughs> okay.
about the bad things in my past. I know one thing of our life, the bad will never last. Nobody knows what tomorrow will bring. It could be a lot of drama or the most beautiful thing. You're somebody I was supposed to You gotta go. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you guys. No, thank you. All right. Yeah. It's been you a pleasure. Have a you have a good day. And I'll be in touch. And then, as soon as I get some of this stuff cut, I'll call you and come look at some of it. Okay. All right. When I think about uh, music and how it, it influences uh, my life and how it has formed my life, uh, I think that it's one of the most powerful tools I found uh, for peace in my life. Uh, today, when I was working with uh, Miss Simon and Jeff and working on the songs we were working on, it really provided me with an opportunity to just leave prison for the hour or so that we were in here working on this song. Uh, I was in San Quentin. This time next week, your films need to be done. Action! I want to take our experiences and turn them into something positive. I'm not comfortable with that. OK. Well, I don't know what to do then. I think it was a lot more chaotic than I expected. You got to just do this. We all must become more responsible for the work that we put out. Yeah. You had us here waiting, man. You only got an hour to shoot six scenes. And you did this to yourself, man. 